The Tronk CX-5 is a machine that has, let's say, specialities that must be eliminated in order to get a really good printer. But first things first. I got the kit of this 3D printer from my sponsor Gearbest. The printer comes with no build instruction, only a PDF showing the wiring is on the microSD card. I found a low resolution video without any audio comments on the Gearbest page that shows how to build the printer. Nonetheless, I could assemble the mechanics without much trouble and you can get photos of my build process on my pages. The accuracy of the parts isn't bad, however there was an issue with the X end switch. That switch was broken because the relatively heavy component it is mounted on caused damage during shipping of the printer. The plastic hinge of the metal flap was broken. I could fix that quickly with a piece of hot wire. Many cheap 3D printers come with an insufficiently insulated power supply, same as the 12V 20A device or the Tronxy. You should at least add a strain relief for the mains cable. The fan of the power supply isn't too loud during operation, however you also can't call it quiet. The frame of the printer is a 39.5x42x50cm cube composed of 20x20mm aluminum bars. It's a simple and rigid design that I really like. X and Y axis move along round bars with 8mm in diameter guided by metal bearings. The set axis with the print bed moves along two more round bars driven by just one motor through a spindle. That axis is the weak point of the construction. As you can see, the round bars bend easily under load... ...because there is a long lever to the front edge of the build plate. When pushing the print bed slightly, it starts vibrating. After the assembly, the bed leveling is done as usually, step by step... ...until nothing more but a sheet of paper fits tightly between build plate and nozzle in the final run. After preheating the extruder for PLA... You can insert the filament. The printer comes without a holder for the filament spool, thus this is the first object I am creating with the Tronxy. The 10 meters filament that chip with the X5 are not enough to print the filament holder, which is why I am using a 1 kilogram spool of PLA in the second run. Fifty four degrees Celsius is the maximum temperature I can read on the main board while printing, thus there is nothing to worry about. You can hear the electronics of the radial fan at the printhead whistle at approximately 50% load, while this device isn't too loud under all other conditions. The maximum temperature of the print bed is approximately 75 degrees Celsius. After one hour, the job is done and the filament holder can be placed on top of the printer. I had a closer look at the Z-axis mount with my next print job. As you can see, the build plate vibrates resulting in ripples on the surface of the print. The mount of the print bed is too weak. I always say that 3D printers are great machines for prototyping, so let's go to the virtual drawing board and create a new mount for the build plate. 
My first idea was to place the round bars on the sides of the frame to get a better relationship of the levers. With the new mounts, the distance between the round bars gets tripled by what the build plate is less shaky. The vibrations in horizontal direction are indeed eliminated. The accuracy of the test print is better now, however you can still notice a movement in vertical direction. Furthermore, with the new mount, the round bars are no longer in line with the spindle. That causes a jerky movement of the print bed along the Z-axis. So, back to the drawing board to make things right now. A tripod construction eliminates backlash in vertical movement, I'm using three stepper motors for the Z-axis in this configuration. All three motors must have the same angular resolution, which is 3.6 degrees for the motors I had in stock, the original motor is 1.8 degrees per step, thus I had to replace this device as well. I'm using common threaded bars with 8mm diameter as spindles. Additional guides are composed of 20mm square tubes. The build plate is connected with the new bearings through 20mm flat iron bars. All other parts needed were printed with PLA using the Tronxy in original configuration. As you can see, the X5 can print the parts needed for the modification even in the original configuration, thus this device isn't useless out of the box. The 8mm nuts were fixed at the new mounts with drops of PLA heated up with a candle. The new printed bearings need 4 ball bearings each. The three stepper motors are switched in series. That causes a higher total voltage per phase, which is why I reduced the speed of the Z-axis to just 1mm per second to keep the torque of the motors high. Furthermore, I had to readjust the steps per millimeter, it's around 2550 steps per millimeter for my configuration. Adjust the height of the build plate manually in such a way that all three motors are spinning easily. Set a mark on the motor couplers afterwards. Ensure that all three motors are spinning into the correct direction, swap the cables of one phase to change the direction of a motor if needed. The new mount of the print bed is very rigid in horizontal direction, as well as in vertical direction. Once more I'm doing the test print at the front edge of the print bed. Now the faces are printed with no ripple, the bad vibrations of the build plate are eliminated. Comparing both prints, there is no doubt that the modification was worth the effort. Now you can get quality prints with the Tronxy, it's the way I like it. As a side effect, there are no strings between the parts on the build plate, the printer shows no oozing. The printed nut fits on the printed thread right after the job is done. Here I am printing links of a cable chain. All parts fit perfectly and you get a working cable chain right out of the printer. You can get high resolution photos of the prints on my project page.
I changed the mount of the power supply... ...the main board... ...the Y-axis motor... ...as well as the display, so that none of the parts sticks out of the edges of the cube. With that, you can cover the frame to get a tiny, boxed factory in a cube. You can install a climate control inside that covered box and all moving parts are protected from unauthorized access. There is still a lot to be done to make the Tronx CX5 become the printer I am dreaming of, however even in the current stage I really like the device. So if you like the challenge of pushing the limits of a 3D printer same as I do, you get a really nice machine for an attractive price. You can get a detailed instruction of the modifications I made and more information about the Tronx CX5 on my project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!